This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. On today's episode, he's taking another look at the weapons from The Last of Us Part 2 with its most recent remaster. The idea of coming across a sporting version of a self-loading rifle fits the survival nature of the game. You're not going to come across select fire military weapons or even necessarily law enforcement weapons. If you like this kind of content, make sure to check out our latest episode of Loadout, which takes a look at the various reasons behind why virtual weapons are named and designed differently to their real-world counterparts. Right, now it's time for The Last of Us Part 2, Part 2. This is a weird beast. The proportions are a bit weird of that, that magazine. Uh, I mean, it looks like a Glock mag, albeit it's made of metal, but it's very slim. It looks too slim for the size of the pistol. It almost looks like a blank firer magazine because they don't have to contain rounds with bullets in them. So they're narrower. Loads of detail here. Um, as to what it is, I'm pretty happy. I am FDB, shout out, has it right that this is in fact the Steyr M9A1. We have the Steyr M9 in the collection, but it's so different. They did a total facelift on, on that for the A1 that it really does look quite different to this. So I haven't haven't got it to show you. It's the closest to the M9 A1, the very shallow slide that's cut out for the, for the thumb on the grip. Polymer frame, of course. Now, I think there are hints of Glock here, so that that extractor it looks much more like a Glock extractor. Yeah, it's interesting. On the one hand, it's kind of a nondescript, generic, maybe you might think legally different pistol, but it's pretty close to that Steyr design. We've got a compensator on this modified one here. Some fairly plausible bad condition to it before it gets cleaned up there. Obviously the polymer isn't going to get rusty. I'm not sure that's quite faithful to how polymer ages. Uh, glass reinforced polymer goes, like it, it wears like an old plastic toy, you know? So wet around the edges, it gets rough and sort of jaggy. <laughs> not a real word. Now this upgrade or change here is really odd. We've got seam welding of plastic. You can sort of sort of do that with polymer, but it doesn't look like metal like it does here. That looks like a seam weld on aluminium or something. And we are seeing a trend now for otherwise polymer frame pistols having aluminium frames made for them, steel frames made for them from the manufacturer. So you could get a welded looking, like if someone's replacing the broken polymer frame with a homemade one, maybe, but why would they be welding parts together in that way? That's been done because it looks cool. Doesn't really make sense. Now, as video game crossbows go, this one, and I'm no expert on these things, but this one looks pretty plausible. She's even easing the, uh, what, in firearms world, easing springs. It's not spring, it's a <laughs> stored tension in cables, essentially. But you don't want to dry fire a crossbow or a boat because it will cause damage. So that's a nice touch. Looks plausibly like a modern compound crossbow. We've got the, the prod at the front there for reloading, effectively, cocking. I'm sure um, crossbow enjoyers will um, have some issues with it that I'm not noticing. My first impression was that it was like made out of an old broken Spaz 12. Like it's got Spaz 12 aesthetics on the main body. <laughs> Interesting. I don't think so. I think it's meant to meant to be like a a gun like crossbow, which is which is quite common now. Um, not not looking like this. I mean, you're right. You're right to pick up on that because it's that big, bulky, hollow receiver shape. It's not something you're commonly going to see on a crossbow because it's a waste of, well, not really a waste. It's a bulk, overly bulky design for what it needs to be. They're normally, you know, machined aluminium, uh, quite slim. If you've got some sort of magazine system on there, that's where it gets bulky and boxy like a gun. But this doesn't. This is uh, traditional single shot. So I see why you say that. If if that's the intention, that it is sort of adapted or, or made, it doesn't look enough like any real guns for me to kind of get on board with that concept. Although, again, it's a good point in terms of the vents, what appear to be vents in a heat shield, which is probably what you're picking up there as Spaz 12. Crossbows don't get hot. You don't need vents in your, in your receiver. But there are um, aesthetic features added to modern crossbows to make them look cool that really aren't necessary for their function as a, as a bow. So we can kind of pass that off as that, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Now, here is where I have to part company with the good folks at IMFDB to an extent, because they're calling this a Taurus PT-92, which is the Brazilian copy of the Beretta 92 series. Uh, they originally were a licensed manufacturer of the 92 series. They did it at a point where the pistol still, still had the safety on the frame, so they carried on doing that. So that's one of the recognition features of the PT-92. So I, say what, I see why they said that. But actually, that means if you go back far enough, you get the 92 series. This is a genuine Beretta 92. Probably my, my favorite uh, iteration of the 92, just, just to look at. So it has the, the frame mounted safety, like the one in the game, like the Taurus, and it has the still curved trigger guard like the gun in the game. So can we really say that this is based on the Taurus? The only thing that would lean me back toward the Taurus would be the serrations, <laughs> out the serrations <laughs> on the slide, because the Taurus does have fewer wider slide serrations, and this gun does too. So it's certainly plausible that they based this on the 92 and gave it the rounded trigger guard. The PT-92 has, a, if anything, a thicker square, square trigger guard at the front. This is why I'm saying maybe it's more like a Beretta. Maybe it's just a generic Beretta copy like the PT-92, but maybe it isn't directly inspired by the PT-92. I think we'd have to ask the artists. I think this made an appearance in the last time we covered The Last of Us part two but as the this version allows you like cosmetic skins and a bit more customization the models are a little shinier i wanted yeah. to showcase it again yeah the color scheme's weird rare it's rare that you'll see random go faster stripes on a pistol different colors are, are no stranger to the firearms world of course we, we've seen quite a lot of variety in colors um you can get custom finishes but just like random car style line pinstriping or go faster stripes not really so it looks a bit weird it's obviously meant to blend with the outfit that the character was wearing function wise the car cartridge case ejection at least on this firearm is really lethargic like if my pistol was barely trickling them out like that i would be concerned that it was about to have a stoppage it's the one kind of functional realism aspect that isn't quite there The wooden stock looks good, um, albeit a bit crude. It looks like somebody has homemade this stock as a replacement. But checkering is a is an art, and uh, whoever checkered this forend doesn't have the the skill we'd expect. Uh, checkering is kind of rough and too big. See the transition there from the, the bolt action Rem the Remington 700, which is obviously what this is supposed to be, to the axe is very cool and gory and appropriate for a zombie game. But I wonder, in that situation, you, you wouldn't have time to sling your rifle and draw a fire axe. You would jab them in the face with the muzzle. You might spin it round and hit them with the stock. Yes, you could break the stock, but if it's life or death, that's what you'd do. I don't think you would, or, or, well, let, let's compromise and say you would drop the rifle, grab the axe and hopefully defend yourself. The bolt action is well done. She's not super slick on it, which we wouldn't expect her to be, but she's working it quite positively. Somebody who knows how to use it, but hasn't had a huge amount of experience, certainly rapid fire. This is where, for me, a little mini game or something would be would be good to simulate the stress of having to because you have to do you have to do the full stroke and get it to work properly. It's not as not as straightforward for a novice as people might imagine. In case anyone's wondering what makes that a Remington 700, um, one of the key recognition features there is that uh, that style of bolt handle with the sort of flattened round shape, but with the uh, knurled raised center section that's like a dome so it's like a dome either side of a wider round shaped bolt handle that's very remington and is uh, distinctive for the for the 700 model I can't work out what's going on with this, Dave. Why is there a magazine if it's only firing one shot? That's what I was thinking. Just to look at it, I've got a, a, a side side view of it here that you've kindly provided. Generic semi-auto hunting rifle, I would say, with a with a, like a five round magazine. What's going, like she, it's like she's firing a shot, swapping mags, so she has one round in each mag for some reason, and then carrying, I'm not sure she's even cocking it, is she? There's a gesture towards cocking it. 
Yes, there is. Yeah, so it's like fire, cock it, swap the magazine. Now, if you've only got one shot in your magazine, cocking it first, which is what I think I'm seeing here, means you've ejected the empty round, but you haven't chambered a fresh round. Then you're putting a fresh round in the magazine that cannot get into the chamber because you're not cocking it again. This, on the face of it, this is a dropped ball, a rare dropped ball in an otherwise pretty realistic feeling game, even if the designs depart from, from the real thing in various ways. This gun makes no sense. I don't know what's happened here. So this was a, a weapon that only appeared in the Lost levels. It was cut content, which they added back in to oh. the HD release. So I'm wondering if it was meant to actually be like a different weapon, maybe? It's so strange because it doesn't it doesn't resemble any real world rifle that I can think of. It doesn't function as it should. Like it's, it's a mile off a magazine fed rifle that you only insert one round. Like if you found it in game as a semi-auto rifle for which you, I can't think of a reason. Maybe, maybe something's broken and it won't feed. So you're you're loading the chamber manually. That's plausible for a survival game. You'd have to op hold the bolt open, drop a round in, close it, shoot. That could be a fun thing. Like you still you're still using it because it's a, maybe it's a powerful cartridge or something. But the magazine is disabled, so it's really slow. It's like artificially slow to reload. That would be the reason to do something like this. Clearly not the case here. Don't know what's going on. Doesn't make sense. Sorry guys. We now have we have a much more. I mean, this is a Saiga hunting rifle. We've got the the RPK style receiver there with the big swollen reinforced trunnion area at the front. This looks good. This is uh, it's even got the um, modern style safety uh, slash dust cover with the shelf on it, so you can operate it with your firing hand finger drop it down, raise it up using that shelf. Slapping in a rocking magazine makes no sense. There's no need to do that at all. It, it, it either locks in positively or it doesn't. Slapping it is going to achieve nothing. This is another one that we saw um, in the original Last of Us Part 2, but I think we got the opportunity to show off. Customized on the bench. So we threw some bells and whistles on it. This this is essentially a Kalashnikov rifle, semi-auto only. It has the long forend, which combined with that front sight gas block system, which we see increasingly on AK type rifles gives it a, a, a very different look uh, more of a sporting look with that thumb hole svd style stock as well some of that's practical some of that's political depending on where you are but it does make the gun look radically different combined with a short magazine as well but as i think i said last time the idea of coming across a sporting version of a self-loading rifle depending where you are in the world fits the survival nature of the game you're not going to come across select fire military weapons or even necessarily law enforcement weapons as easily as you are are people's hunting rifles, people's sporting shotguns, people's self-defense pistols, that kind of thing. The traditional flamethrower, something we've uh, covered a fair bit on this series, and this is one of those scratch designed, not based on anything type flamethrowers. Although it's also not really improvised. Games do love their sort of homemade looking flamethrowers. This looks like a, well, clearly is some sort of commercial product. It even has a warning sticker on the side. We get a really nice view of the fuel before it's being ignited, which looks really cool. If you look at real flamethrowers, you will see that there is visible liquid because it hasn't quite caught from the igniter yet, right at the muzzle. So that's really nicely done, really gives you the feeling of a, of a real thing. That squirt sound as well, that's very distinctive and, and correct. Far too self-contained for a practical flamethrower. That fuel tank is far too small. This is why flamethrowers typically had backpacks and ultimately why they were replaced by rocket and missile weapons or grenades that have a flame effect because it's far more practical. We've even got a, a gradual range of effect here. So, so someone who's only caught by the edge there is partly lit on fire and is very preoccupied then with putting themselves out. Someone who gets it full force for a period of time, they are fully engulfed. This might be the best flamethrower we've seen in terms of its effect. This is a, an interesting one. So this very clearly, like your brain goes, that's an M, well, you might say M14, 
in a civilian context, it's likely to be the M1A, the Springfield M1A. So no capability for automatic fire. The real brain melter here is not so much the detail of how this doesn't look like an M14, because it's one of these where the more you look at it, the more wrong it looks. It almost looks more like the um, SAFN, the, or the FN49, the Belgian self-loading rifle from the 50s in the action area. And the, the gas block is far too big and chunky. But the really big weird thing is that the gas piston is on the top up here, which it which it should not be. So it's a, it's a strange design choice because there are guns in the game that are far closer to their real world counterparts, like the like the handgun, for example. If somebody wanted to get a bit legal, if you're interested in this, like why are why are video game guns different? Often check out the the episode of Loadout that will be out by the time this video comes out that covers this in some depth. I think we're much further ahead in our understanding of... Uh, I think Dave's really managed to bottom that out. But we still have head scratches like this of, okay, Springfield Armory, the modern company, might, like, you know, object to you slavishly replicating the rifle. They may not. But then we have other guns in the game that are pretty damn close to the real thing. Is this artistic license? That's the always the other option. Not I am I am convinced that not every change made is at the behest of lawyers. Well, with this example in mind because it's it's got two round magazine capacity. If it's different enough from something like an M1A, they're like, well, we don't have to do a 5, 10, 20, 15 round magazine capacity because it's not an M1A. It's our own thing. And this thing has a two round magazine. Do with do it. You know what? Yeah, that, that would fit under the artistic license <laughs> category in terms of gameplay reasons, say we only want two rounds for this, so maybe we should make it look different so that people don't go, well, I've got an M1A and it has a much higher round count than that. But then the, if we look at the magazine, okay, it's not the uh, it's not the 20 round magazine of, a, of a, an M14 or the longer uh, mag on an M1A, but it is much bigger than a two round capacity would dictate. If you want a two round self-loading rifle, you do get low capacity self-loading rifles for hunting. Then almost never only two rounds. I can't think of any that are only two rounds. And it, but if you did, then you would just make the gun look like this. Because if an M1 Garin can happily fit eight rounds in, a, in its receiver without a, a, a magazine that sticks out, then this thing can as well. So it's another, it's another head scratcher for me. Thanks everybody for watching. We really do appreciate it. Don't forget over at the Royal Armouries YouTube channel, we are doing sort of some uh, deep dives into individual uh, firearms that you might want to check out. We have, of course, our own social media accounts, uh, three museums here in the UK that we, we hope you can, you can visit. Regardless, we are going to be here next week here on GameSpot and we hope you'll join us.